This is Occupy Maine TV on Portland's Community Television Network. Hi, I'm Bob Klotz from Occupy Maine reporting on our environment. Excuse me while I take a deep breath. It's really been a busy couple of weeks and there's a lot to consider so you might want to be ready to take some notes and use the pause button during this episode. I've considered changing my name to Chicken Little, except in my version of the story, the sky literally is falling, as is sanity. 80 degrees in March somehow gets defined as good weather when it's actually additional evidence that climate change is happening now. Last year, invest infestations of many pests were related to a longer warm period in the state of Maine in light of similar early spring weather and later fall early winter cooling. The ecosystem actually protects us with winter. The suppression of many plant, insect, infectious, and other dangers is critical to protecting our health. This is the nature of nature. With high pollen counts in the mid-Atlantic states in February, unheard of temperatures, a lack of snowpack, increased threat of fires, and a host of other active climate change realities, it's clear that we're in jeopardy of significant environmentally related health issues in the coming months and years. At a time when the LePage administration continues to assault the social safety net, such things are yet another factor in the reality of Mainers literally suffering and dying needlessly. When 14,000 people died in France in 2003 related to an unprecedented heat wave, climate denying conservative pundits in this country suggested that the lesson that they should have learned was to get air conditioning and build more Walmarts. Frankly, I think such denial and callousness in the face of scientific fact should be viewed as a criminal act. Given reality, we should apply a climate change fee on everyone. When it's literally too hot to live comfortably, the funds could be used to gain some relief for those of us who are still alive who voiced these concerns and who've done something about it. And what of the deniers? Jail would probably be too comfortable. And it's pretty clear that they would have continued to vote against their own best interest, probably arguing to give the funds to the failed oil companies. In many ways, it does seem that paradise is lost. On a recent trip, I was shocked to see how much garbage existed on what should be a pristine beach. The fact that this is in any way acceptable is probably the most disturbing thing about what we have come to. Even when faced with the evidence of the impact of our highly consumptive, destructive, and disposable ways, it's somehow okay and denied. Back home here in Maine, there's been notable activity at the State House, both in support of and in opposition to our environment and our people. As an attempt at a feeble summary, let me be clear that there are many forces that are committed to working together to fundamentally change the way life should be in Maine and to destroy our environment. Stay with me on this. I realize that some of the terms and issues make my eyes glaze over. Why they don't call it poison flowing through your backyard versus tar sands oil is beyond me. Here they are all in a rush. East-West Highway, Enbridge Pipeline, the Searsport LPG Tank Project, and ALEC. And that's pretty much how they are moving it through the legislature, the governor's office, and our oversight agencies in a rush. With the second session of the 125th legislature due to close up shop in April, the push is on. Consider, significant concerns remain regarding the risk of the Enbridge pipeline bringing Western Canadian tar sands oil through Maine and into Portland. Tar sands oil is one of the dirtiest fossil fuels on the planet its acquisition, production, transportation, and usage are incredibly damaging to our environment. The powers that are intent on such destruction are not going away. Like a bully called on their behaviors, they're not going to suddenly say, oh, you're right, I'm a sociopath. They are in this for the long haul, and we need to be as well. Interestingly, there's strong evidence that the Chinbro-supported East-West Highway would be developed in association with the pipeline. Do not be fooled that this is going to make your trip to Vermont go easier. This highway has nothing to do with anything but corporate interest dissecting the state and destroying incredibly scenic areas for their profit. And all evidence suggests that the primary beneficiary of this highway would be Canadian exporters. Additional evidence links the creation of this transportation and energy super corridor to the development of an LPG tank project in Searsport. With that construction, yet another example of elected officials having sold out to corporate interest. And then there's ALEC, 
the American Legislative Exchange Council. As reported by Regis Tremblay, this not so shadowy instrument of the largest corporations in America has enormous influence in the state of Maine and with these interconnected environmental issues. Crafting legislation that serves the interest of corporations over people, Alec boasts that one in every five of their bills are enacted into law. And so it goes. As of today, the East-West Highway has received support via the State Senate and the House to receive $300,000 worth of funding for a feasibility study with funds coming from the state of Maine. And this is just the most recent pursuit of the study with the recurrent effort through decades denied up until now. This is corporate welfare at its most apparent, at the same time that the safety net is being shredded. Where is the outrage and where are our elected officials? Here's some more. John Courtney, the Republican Majority Leader of the Senate from York, has developed a resolution to support the Keystone XL pipeline, in effect further greasing the political skids for support of the Enbridge pipeline through Maine. All of this should be further considered in the larger context of the incredible movement to strip even more of the natural resources of this state for corporate gain, including the Northwoods and the dismantling of Lurk, the grab for our water resources, and efforts to ensure that Maine becomes the way life was. There's also movement to increase out-of-state toxic and other waste coming into Maine, specifically at the Norgewalk dump, and the consideration of a major rewrite to mining rules, allowing for direct in-state mountaintop removal versus the indirect that we now have because we use Appalachian coal for our electricity in Maine, largely. Maine is clearly open for business. Like the runt of the litter, it's as if those who should be looking out for our best interest have literally rolled over top of us. And I'm pissed, and you should be too. We literally cannot afford this on so many levels. But those of you care know what needs to be done. Unfortunately, that means we have to work as hard or harder than the forces against us. In the words of Bill McKibben, we have to organize, organize, organize. Though there is the tendency and the necessity to take on these individual issues, we have to maintain the larger view and take things on at that level. This is a fundamentally corrupt and intentionally integrated assault on a massive scale, destroying the most basic aspects of our state, our country, and our environment. This is what the Occupy process is all about, and it is critical that we continue to work together to find ways to effectively respond to these realities. Please stay in touch with like-minded, environmentally supportive friends, families, organizations, and other entities, including me. Also stay engaged with those who are consciously and unconsciously committed to destroying our environment and use all of your skills to stay effectively committed to change. Do what you can in your own life to support our environment and then a bit more. Contact your elected representatives and let them know your position and expectation around these issues and remind them that you vote and you are very aware of the upcoming elections and take part in the numerous upcoming activities that support our environment. Consider, on April 5th, the Natural Resources Council of Maine will be holding a seminar at Bowdoin College regarding mountaintop removal in Appalachia with obvious considerations of issues here in Maine. In honor of Earth Day, the Hope Festival in Bangor will be taking place on Saturday the 21st of April with keynote speaker Bill McKibben of 350.org. And on April 22nd, Mensk and the City of Portland will hold their Urban Earth Day events. I hope to see you at these events and would love to hear about events that you are aware of in support of our environment. Also, consider this link to a critical petition encouraging Congress to end all subsidies to fossil fuel companies and to invest in green jobs and clean energy. And be sure to keep May 5th open for a Connect the Dots event regarding real and current climate change. More details on this in the future. Stay cool and be in touch.